This video will discuss the wave functions of the rigid rotor model in quantum mechanics. So our obligatory review, we have two atoms M with mass 1 and mass 2. They're separated by a distance r, the bond length, which is a fixed rigid value. We have reduced mass of the system equals mass 1 times mass 2 over mass 1 plus mass 2. The moment of inertia, or re resistance to angular acceleration, equals reduced mass times bond length squared. So we have our Schrodinger equation for this system, h psi equals e psi. Psi is a function of theta and phi, the angular coordinates in spherical polar, and it depends on two quantum numbers, j and m. And the energy, e, depends on just quantum number j. The energy we've come across before, e sub j equals h bar squared over 2i times j times j plus 1. And the Hamiltonian operator is just the kinetic energy, which is equal to the negative angular momentum squared operator divided by 2 times moment of inertia. And our potential energy is 0, as long as our center of mass isn't moving and our bond length is rigid. And our angular momentum squared operator, which we had previously derived, is this mess here, which is negative h bar squared times 1 over sine theta dd theta of the product sine theta dd theta plus 1 over sine squared theta second partial derivative with respect to phi. So our strategy to solve this is what is always our strategy, separation of variables. Psi jm of theta and phi equals capital theta jm of theta times capital phi of little phi. So we're going to separate it into a function of theta, the polar angle, and phi, the azimuthal angle in spherical polar. So when we do that, we apply our Hamiltonian to our wave function. What we're going to get is this mess down here, uh, sine theta over function theta dd theta of sine theta d theta d theta plus 2 times moment of inertia times energy over h bar squared sine squared theta. That's all things that depend on theta equals 1 over phi d squared phi with respect to little phi. And this is all equal to a constant, which we'll call negative m squared. So this doesn't change with theta. This doesn't change with phi. The only way this can be true for all theta and phi is if they're both equal to a constant. So our capital phi, our function of phi, based off the properties of the, of the variable phi in, in spherical polar coordinates, we know that it's periodic every 2 pi radians. Every 360 degrees, you've rotated all the way around the z-axis, and you've come back around again. So phi, phi of phi plus 2 pi equals phi of phi. So phi, just depending on the quantum number m, phi m of phi equals 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the i m phi. This is a complex exponential, so the value m Quantum number m can take on values 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, all the way up to plus or minus j. So j is greater than or equal to m, which is greater than or equal to minus j. All right, this whole mess here for function theta is beyond our power to solve in this course. If you want to go through that whole derivation and mess, uh, take quantum mechanics in a physics department and you shall delight for days in the gory detail of that derivation. So we'll skip to the result. The result is that phi jm, sorry, theta jm of theta equals a normalization constant times a polynomial of cosine theta. So this normalization constant, 2j plus 1 over 2, times j minus absolute value of m factorial over j plus absolute value of m factorial. So everything in there is straightforward enough, and then square root of everything. Then we have a polynomial of cosine theta called the associated Legendre polynomials. So the value of an associated Legendre polynomial, PLM of x, uh, notice that this is P absolute value of mj of cosine theta. So PLM of x equals minus 1 to the m over 2 to the l, l factorial, times 1 minus x squared to the m over 2, 
times the L plus mth derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 1 to the L. So that is all a very big mess of a generating function. Usually you'll just look these things up in a table of the Legendre polynomials or of the rigid rotor wave functions, which are also called the spherical harmonics. So the combination of this theta function and our phi function becomes something which is much more familiar and widely used in physics. It becomes, as I said, the spherical harmonics, where psi jm of theta and phi equals y jm of theta and phi. You'll also see this written as y lm of theta and phi. So y jm of theta and phi equals a normalization constant times the associated Legendre polynomials times our complex exponential from the phi part. So normalization, square root of 2j plus 1 over 4 pi times j minus absolute value of m factorial over j plus absolute value of m factorial, square root of everything. The Legendre polynomials of cosine theta of values j absolute value of m times e to the i m phi. So what does this give us for actual values of j and m? So j starts at 0. It goes up to infinity as an integer m can be any value between j and minus j, which is an integer. So y0,0 0, 0 is a constant, 1 over square root of 4 pi. y0,1, j equals 1, m equals 0, is a normalization constant times cosine theta. y1 plus or minus 1, so j equals 1, m equals plus or minus 1, equals normalization constant times sine theta times e to the plus or minus i phi. For y, j equals 2, m equals 0, normalization constant times 3 cosine squared theta minus 1, then sine theta cosine theta e to the plus or minus i theta for j equals 2, m equals plus or minus 1, j equals 2, m equals plus or minus 2, normalization times sine squared theta e to the plus or minus 2i phi. So these spherical harmonics functions may look a little familiar, maybe not, but these are actually the angular part of the hydrogen atom atomic orbitals. So we'll see these functions again in the hydrogen atom atomic orbitals. These are the things that give atomic orbitals their shape. So this is the shape of the 1s orbital. This is the shape of the 2pz orbital, 2px and 2py. Uh, th the, uh, the 3s orbital, I believe. Sorry, 2s, 3s. Uh, 3 yeah, this, sorry, this would be 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. Yes, that's the correct value. So these spherical harmonics are the things that give the hydrogen atom atomic orbitals their shape with respect to angle. And we'll look a little bit more at the properties of these before concluding the rest of this chapter on the rigid rotor.